Nacho Torres remained in the church, protected by the law of sanctuary. But the Comandante Monastario was determined to make Torres his prisoner. And to do this, he had to lure Torres out of the church where he could be captured. Monastario devised a clever plan. And I was visiting the mission when the Comandante arrived. Buenos dias, Padre. Buenos dias. Senor de la Vega. Buenos dias. I suppose you've returned with a new scheme to break the law of sanctuary? Not at all. I've returned to protect church property and your lives. Against what? Against a surprise attack by hostile Indians. Oh, there are no hostile Indians here. They are all my children. You think so? One of the Indians has confessed to me that his people are planning to burn the mission and kill you. That is impossible. Why, they love Padre Felipe. They have planned revenge for a long time. They mean to strike under cover of darkness. I have no choice but to put this mission under martial law. A shabby trick, Capitan Monasterio. On the contrary, I am performing my duty. You are beloved by all the people. I cannot risk leaving you unprotected when there is imminent danger of a bloody massacre. Padre, I formally declare this mission to be under my personal military command. Now, if you please, I shall select a private room for my headquarters. Sergeant Garcia, bring two guards and come with me. Come, this way. Don Diego, it is quite obvious what the Comandante has in mind. Unable to get Don Nacho any other way, he now invents a false Indian uprising as an excuse to take over the mission. But as long as Don Nacho remains in the church, he is protected by sanctuary. True, but Monasterio will keep him in there. How long can Don Nacho live without food or water? Plainly, this was a situation to be handled by Zorro. That night, I donned my mask and cloak and successfully eluded the guards to deliver food and water to the grateful Don Nacho. Capitan Monastario had surrounded the mission with his lancers, and only by trickery could we free Don Nacho from the evil grasp of the Comandante. So, it was trickery we used. With the help of my trusted servant, Bernardo, I laid a careful plan. Then, next day, I rode in my carriage to the mission. Halt! Who goes there? It is only I, Diego de la Vega, come to see Padre Felipe. Oh, Don Diego. I am temporarily in command here. Would you please dismount? Now, why do you want to see Padre Felipe? I have an old manuscript he expressed a desire to see. May I see this document? Certainly. What is this uh, secret writing? Oh, that is uh, Latin, Sergeant. Oh, of course, I know that. He... But what does it say? Oh, I don't think you would be interested. It's just an account of something uh, rather strange that happened here many years ago. Strange? What was it? It seems that when this mission was built back in 1771, a band of marauding savages struck in the dead of night. They captured an unfortunate monk and they tortured him until he went mad. He was tied to that very tree under which you stand. Oh, it was smaller then, naturally. Ever since, so the tale goes, his ghost has haunted the mission on dark, moonless nights. The... the ghost of the mad monk? I am surprised you never heard of it. The mission Indians claim to have seen it, but, well... They are superstitious natives. What... What do they think they saw? A figure in a cowled robe, rising from the graves back of the church. Then it walks through the empty corridors, moaning and clanking chains, sometimes emitting a ghoulish laugh. Oh, the rest, the rest is so unbelievable, I do not think you would be interested. Oh, go on, Don Diego, please, tell me. You... I promise you won't repeat it. Oh, I promise. Well, the legend says that at midnight, when the spirit walks, the church bell rings mysteriously. It is regarded as a warning of some dire event to come. A warning? An omen of death approaching, like the hoot of an owl. Of course you are much too enlightened to believe in such nonsense. No, oh, of course. Then. But then what happens? The narrative ends abruptly. But the ancient scribe was found in the morning, lying here, where you are, stiff and stark. Dead? Exceedingly so. Ah, here comes Padre Felipe. A lancer told me you were here, Diego. Yes, Padre, I've brought the manuscript you were so anxious to see. Manuscript? 
Let us walk to your garden and we shall discuss it together. Farewell, Sergeant. What about this manuscript? Nothing, Padre. Just a little joke between Sergeant Garcia and myself. Padre, do you believe in intuition? Ooh, I suppose I do. Why do you ask? I seem to feel that this uh, reign of terror is coming to an end soon. I hope so. Let us pray that it does. I remained at the mission, and toward midnight, when the sky was black and there was no moon, I again became Zorro. First I stationed Bernardo with bow and arrows near the mission wall. Then I prepared a slingshot and took aim at the mission bell. What was that? Who rang the bell? Corporal, did you? You, Private, did you? Who is ringing the bell? It cannot ring by itself. What's the meaning of this? Why did the bell ring? I am trying to find out, Capitan. <laughs> oh, what's that? What's what? Something is moving over there by the cemetery. Go see what it is. Me? But officer should lead, sir. We will go together. Oh, it's a ghost. A ghost? What ghost? The ghost of the mad monk. Bah! Ghosts and phantoms do not exist. Or take or remain here on guard. Sergeant Garcia and I will find out who this ghost really is. <laughs> there, there he is, behind that tombstone. That is no ghost, that is... That is Zorro! I will take care of him. What was that? An arrow. The Indians are attacking just like you said they would. Quiet, you fool. The story was not true. It was merely a falsehood so I could encircle the mission. Sergeant Garcia, stop! Help! We'll all be massacred! Stop! I command you! To horse lancers! Back to the quartel! We shall be ready for the last man! Stop! All of you! Come back! So it was. With my trusted friend, Bernardo, a few arrows, an old chain, and a slingshot, Zorro outwitted Capitan Monastario and scattered his soldiers. Later that night, Don Nacho left the deserted mission and set out for Monterrey to plead his case with the governor. 